Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Saturday, January 15th. Thoughts Count Anywhere come to you live from the Go Live Vegas studios in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. Matt Mullen on your far left on your screen, the chief anchoring in the middle. Aaron Phillips here holding down the fort. And we want you to call in and join us. Why, Chief? Because the Chief said That's so. That's right, doggone it. We got a lot to talk about. Two hours may still not be enough to contain everything we want to talk about. So, you want to see to go three hours? We need sponsors. Yeah, we need we more do. advertisers, <laughs> right? Join the fastest growing wrestling talk show that's out there. Coast to coast, sea to sea, Antarctic to what's down south? Antarctica? What's the southern one? There you go. Cold to cold. Cold to cold. <laughs> Top to bottom. Call us. What's our info to get information for advertising? You can go to our website, thoughtscountanywhere.com, for all the packages and information, or email us at info at thoughtscountanywhere.com. Right on. We'll get back to you. We got a lot. Listen, if you think you're going to have to take a mortgage out to promote with us, uh uh-uh. We ain't taking anybody's food off their table to have us promote you to some 30,000 people per week. That's what Thoughts Count Anywhere is all about, God darn it. Right? Damn straight. That's right. Start off 2022 by getting to 120,000 people per month for pennies on the dollar. With that, go ahead. <laughs> is it time I was on a roll. Yet? Is for, it time not yet? yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not story time yet. Oh. I was going to ask how your guys' week was since we were last here. Wasn't too bad, actually. Not too bad? No. Save your stories. We've got story time coming up here momentarily. <laughs> Mr. Chief? I'm at, a, I'm at 99.5% of? Ready to roll. What's the, I'm afraid to ask about the point five. It's so one sure. donut away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need his own donuts. He, nope. he, never, he brings them in for the rest of us, Hogs. Nope. But he doesn't eat his own, in, which I probably shouldn't eat one either, but it's my weekly highlight. That's so. all right. That's all right. It's so all good. I'm you, ready. I'm ready. Are you saving that point five for your rant? Is that what you're saving it for? Who's, I'm just curious. Who's there? You know, no, I'm, I haven't brought up the, the stream yet. Oh, okay. I'm asking you, though. Are you saving that extra point five for I am. three minutes of fame, as you like to say? I am. It's now 258. Good morning, Thomas. I love that, by the way. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Ben. I want to thank you guys for joining us. 702-329-6947. Press the number one. And listen, Thomas Burnett really wants me to use the, the nickname for you that he gave me. What's that? When I do the intro, the big boss man of TCA. I'll take it. You'll take it? All right. <clears throat> do we have the graphic ready, sir, for story time? Because we have to start every show before we even get into rumors this way. Because everybody's waiting. I know you got something or two ready, right? Yeah, I always got something. All right. It's Fremont Street. <laughs> That's true. Are we ready? There we go. Okay. <laughs> With the big boss man of thoughts count anywhere. It was it the other day I get a phone call and they were like it was Denny's and they're like, Someone's trying to destroy the restaurant. Can you get over here? And we're like, All right, so we get over there. And this bum is in there trying to break tables, broke a bunch of plates. So we ended up grabbing him, throwing him in handcuffs. And he was mad because they were in the middle of trying to clean and they weren't seating anybody. <laughs> and he said they're threatening us all, doing all this crazy stuff. So I started grabbing the handcuffs and he started crying and shut up immediately. Said he was going to do so and so to us once he gets out of stuff and he ain't going to get in trouble. Did you, did you happen to see the videotape of Santana Jackson on Fremont Street? You know who Santana Jackson yeah. is, right? Michael Jack, the Michael Jackson right. impersonator. Uh, wrestling with BVW <clears throat> and, and verses and everything else. But he showed a video clip. Somebody, on a, somebody, he was performing on Fremont, whatever he was doing, and some guy out of nowhere actually starts attacking him from behind. Literally. This, this was not a work. And people were recording it on their phones, and they posted it. And he got I him. hope he whooped the guy's <clears throat> ass. Well... I give him kind of sort of. I, I, right. I give him credit for some some restraint because in order to, to until the authorities got there, he put him in a sleeper. Okay. He got the guy down. He did not throw any <coughs> fists at the guy. He just corralled him, controlled him, got him in a sleeper to calm him down, and that was it. But the guy was pulling his hair. I mean, obviously he was on something because of the way he acted. Oh, he just, was uh, wasted. You can tell. So him you know. The video. So you saw the video then, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's terrible. Just uh, it's just terrible. So what happened to this guy? You you asked he was in his handcuffs and new jewelry and everything. Oh, yeah, he had matching bracelets. 
<laughs> courtesy of me. There you Did go. You put a Tennessee and once he dog was like, whooping on him. Huh? Did you put a Tennessee dog whooping on him? No, there's too many people around. But sure every time he got screaming about, I'm going to screw your you, mom you and blah, him blah. Him I just him up. click the handcuffs yeah. a little bit. and <laughs> that a boy. And then once the cops got there, he went to the Clark County Detention Center. So then he really lost I was just going to say, he really probably had to start crying there. 702-329-6947. If you're outside the United States, one 855 Press the number one in either case. Call in. Chat with us, doggone it. First caller to chat and ask a question. We're going to send you a brand new Thoughts Can Anywhere mug, courtesy of the Go Live Vegas website. And don't forget, go to uh, thoughtscanywhere.com. There's a picture of the mug. There we go. We'll send it to you. Or you can come in studio and get it if you're local. We'll spot highlights as a guest. How's that? 702-329-6947. Chief, you got something. Hey, I see, Hi, Jason. I see our buddy, uh, Mr. Ben Bowman from Top Rope Collectibles yeah. is, on, yeah. is on with his top of the morning, Mr. Ben. Yes, I do. Uh, big, big note today, uh, tomorrow, 2.30 p.m., Versus Pro Wrestling comes back. Really? 2.30 at the Versus Studio tomorrow. Oh. No one contacted me, so I guess I won't be there. And the other thing <clears throat> is, are we going to wait on it, or should we do it now? I don't know what you Mr. refer. Mr. Mox. Let's, we'll talk about it in the... We'll in, talk about yeah. it in the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, Shant just jumped in there, Mr. Desert Shark, saying he's got better stories. Maybe we ought to have a story off one day. A celebrity death story off between you and Shant in studio. Well, his... He works at MGM. Right. That's, he's got more people. He, so. he, he, worked, he works at MGM right now that's owned by MGM, but pretty soon it's not going to be owned by MGM anymore. Who's going to own them? Who's, who's it selling them? Somebody from uh, across the big pond oh. is buying them out. Right on. All right. So it's time for I hear voices. Ding, ding, ding. I was saying it slowly, <laughs> waiting for him to get his finger on the button. So there you go. All right. Rumor number one. Rumor is when we talked about this, I think, last week with Mickey James coming over for the Women's Royal Rumble. Uh -huh. uh, she wants to get a male entrant. Uh-huh. Now, we talked about that, right? Yes, we did. It would make sense with her input. It would either be NWA, in our opinion, or Impact, right? Yeah, most likely. It wasn't May like her wanting it. It's WWE wants a male entrant. So they listened to us last week, is what you're saying. They listened to our show. Hell <laughs> yeah. Maybe her husband. Well, that's why, I, yeah, Nick Aldis, <clears throat> right? Mr. Aldis. Yeah, right? That's why it could be from NWA, maybe, Impact, because she's the champ. How about Moose? Yeah, we talked about Moose. I mean, if you got the women's champ, why not the men's champ, right? I, I totally agree with you. Now, Trevor Murdoch is the champ over at NWA. He likes to drink beer, too. <laughs> I, you know, I remember watching Murdoch. Hey, he does. WWE, like, years and forever ago. Hey, his, his dad was a heller, man. Yeah, he yeah buddy. If they're going to, like, open the forbidden door, I want to see the ultimate plot twist. That being? CM Punk coming out at the Royal Rumble and winning and main eventing WrestleMania. Wow. After bitching about all this for like 10 years. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> well, as I've said for the last few months, never say never. Okay. Now, how many times and, does somebody retire, right? And we've, we've said in the past, oh, promotions aren't going to cross paths. Well, you know what? I think we're getting ready somewhere down the road to see promotions cross paths. And Mr. McMahon has finally opened it up and came out and said he will bring independent wrestlers in, plus he will work with other promotions. So, so, so I've always said it, and I'll continue to say it, and my two colleagues here can disagree with me, but I think we're going to see it sooner than later, folks. Did you see Brandy's comment in the chat room for you, Matt? Uh, no, I'm in the middle of sharing oh, okay. everything. okay. Gotcha. She wants to know where were you during the Santana Jackson incident, why he had to take care of himself. Because <laughs> I work at the Neonopolis, and he was over by the Four Queens. It's not my property. It's not, it's not your job. Tell Santana to go over by, like, Mickey Finn's, and I got him. Oh, there you go. Uh, I want to I move along with, with a thought to your comment there, Chief, because... Please do. If the Forbidden Door, which obviously has now been opened with Mickey coming over, right? Could this be a hidden reason why NXT 
has kind of where they are now with more of the training developmental stage and not stars, knowing that if the forbidden door was going to start being opened, all the stars and people that were part of NXT anyway could be coming back to WWE, even if it's for one-off appearances or little runs or whatever. Maybe there was a little something in there as well? You never know. I wonder if that's why they shifted Bruce Pritchard down to NXT now. Yeah. You know? But, hey, what about, I mean, I mean, you stop and look at it. This past week, ROH comes on to Impact. Yeah. Okay. Well, ROH has nowhere else to go right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> but still, yeah, yeah. but still, it's another promotion yep. coming into another promotion. Mm -hmm. And I think we're finally going to start seeing it. I agree. I, I, you know, take my money if CM Punk was to go back and show up at WWE. Hell yeah. I, 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 they could take mine faster. Brian, Daniel Bryan, <laughs> Brian Danielson comes back. You know, Punk. I mean, <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, Punk, I think. Tell me if again. I'm just going to throw out there for conversation. Has Punk's return to AEW been as electric as many people thought it would be when the rumors started bouncing around that he may come back to wrestling? To me, I don't think it has. What was that? Do you, I, do you think I, Punk's no, return I, I has don't. been as electric no. and as satisfying as many people thought it would have been or ex were expecting? when his name started being out there, that he was coming back to wrestling and ultimately signed with AEW. At first, yes, but now that he's fighting all these jobbers all the time and he's out there every week, it's kind of losing its luster. With MJF now. The MJF thing is cool, but... But they're not doing that with Brian Danielson, if you noticed. True. But here's, here's, here's my point to you. Yeah. Brian Danielson already got a championship shot. Mm -hmm. CM Punk hasn't. Okay, so to, uh, to answer your question, I think Danielson's got the bigger pop than Punk. Oh, I, that, that's exactly where I'm going. I mean, look at, look at when they both returned that first night, okay? Yep. But everybody knew Punk was coming back. The, the, the surprise really wasn't there. Everybody expected Brian Danielson to show up, but they didn't expect him to show up until the Arthur Ashe show in New York City. So they bumped him up a month early with Adam Cole. What they did not do well was they brought Adam Cole out right before Daniel, Brian Danielson, and Cole lost a lot of that luster for his entrance and his True. presentation. Then all of a sudden, now comes Brian Danielson, and I think AEW in the wrestling world is still electric about him performing in AEW. The, the Broadway match, the 60 minutes, the 30 minutes, and what he's doing, he's being presented in a very different way than the way Punk has, and I don't think Punk's return or his activity, like you said, the jobbers that he's been facing... I think there's a lot of lost luster there. I think there's going to be a bigger pop when Mr. Moxley comes back. But he was already part of the organization, though. But Speaking of forbidden doors, what if he gets involved in the Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns Moxley? match? Yeah. Wow. Didn't even think about that. <laughs> he could be the ref. Yeah, the referee didn't come out of the crowd. No, like, here, just show him, shift both of them. Just show him sitting, so sitting in the front row as an attendee. Here's what my point was with yeah. Mox, and I know we're going to talk yeah. about mm -hmm. it, but I want to bring this Please. up. Moxley is going to get a big pop when he walks into the arena, mm -hmm. walks into the ring when fucking Adam Cole's in there, and he's going to lay Adam Cole's ass out. Could be. Well, he's scheduled. We'll jump the shark a little bit. Sorry, Desert Shark. Moxley is expected to make his return on Friday the 24th, is it? What's it? 15, 22nd. 23rd. 20, today's the 15th, 22nd is next Saturday. That was a Friday night. That the they 21st or 28th? The 21st, I'm sorry. The, 21st, the 21st at GCW at the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. Which surprises me because he left as part of AEW, so I would have expected his return match would have been in AEW. But Chief... You brought up a good point before he went on the air with the penalty box. Maybe Tony Khan said, hey, look, go get a match under your belt at GCW or somewhere else before coming back to AEW. But he could have been, you know, um, um, uh, going through, you know, uh, rehearsals and, and warm-ups and stuff on his own in the meantime. I'm sure, but, he's, I'm sure he was training in Ohio. Right, training. That's no where, doubt in my mind. Right. right. So, no doubt. But it, it's just interesting. I just thought it would have been with AEW instead of GCW. Kind of like baseball. Like, you're coming back. After a while, go get your feet wet in the in AAA, AAA yeah. and then yep. you can come back over here. Absolutely. Um, Josh Wolf says, uh, the show was felt a little dull without Omega, Moxley, and Cody. We're talking about AEW. Bernie says, Moxley for the win at the Rumble. Could you imagine? I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll blow my gasket 
if, if on the 29th, uh, Mosley my, comes out for the Royal Rumble, because it's, you <laughs> notice with two weeks to go, and from the la- last list I saw last night, 13, 14 names maybe? I don't, I don't remember uh, the number for the men's side. That's called good creative thinking. Which they did not do with the ladies' side. That, well, although there's still 10 or so women well, left. Well, I'll right? tell you what. There was a Bailey? Sasha? No, Sasha's no, no, not no, ready no. to. No. Neither is Bailey. There's one lady that came out last night that said she, she thinks she's got one more run in her. And uh, wh- looking at her last night, she looked in pretty damn good shape. Of course, we're talking about Lita. Yes, we well, are. Well, rumor has it is that they're, they got her there and not expecting this to be a one-off in the Rumble because she wants one more run. This was apparently a bargaining chip between WWE to appear and going to AEW, especially if Jeff and Matt reconnect for the Hardy Boys and Lita and starting that whole thing again. So we may see Lita stick around for a little bit, maybe through WrestleMania, because she started something with Charlotte last night. Well, I have a friend uh, who does promoting in the Indiana area um, who now lives down in Tennessee. And he just signed Matt and Jeff Hardy to wrestle at his upcoming huge event in Indiana. Okay. So they are gonna so they are back together is wrestling. Jeff, is Jeff beyond his ninety days already? I don't I have it, no idea. When the show when the show happens it will be past the ninety days. Can okay. you talk to said friend and have the Hardy Boys come on and we'll promote the hell out of his show? Do you have an, <laughs> do you have uh, quite a bit of money to make that happen? Because I sure as shit don't <laughs> Hello, Scott. No, anyway, but a lot of listen. This is all great. <laughs> but, this is the great this, thing about Royal but Rumble. But this is, is no lie. They yeah. are they Good. are going to get back together. They are going to wrestle at his show in Indiana. Because Matt, with all due respect, we've had him on the show in the past, yeah. and his great. I think he's got a much better legacy in wrestling than Jeff does. Be, obviously, because of Jeff's demons that have not as many him. ghosts in the closet. Correct. Um, Matt, even being in AEW, obviously he debuted as you know. Um, uh, during the pandemic where there was yeah. nobody there, no reaction really. Matt's, Matt's time in AEW hasn't been great either. I mean, no. he's put on the matches he's been in, like when he fell off the, the, uh, the forklift stuff. Yeah, all of that stuff. But his, his involvement in AEW has not really been exciting. So I could see Jeff and Matt teaming back up that excitement uh, in, a, in a reconnection. You know, yeah, that definitely pop them back up in the main event. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How do you think the storylines are in AEW right now? I think they're getting a little lackluster. I, mean, I think everyone's just waiting the payoff for like the couple of big storylines. Yeah. Who knows? Well, you got enough airtime on for AEW between all the TV shows. Now they're on TBS instead of TNT. They got a million views for last week's show. Um, yeah, so? they're, they're not listening to me. They need to go 605 on Saturdays <laughs> on TBS. <laughs> Tony Condi, you're listening? All right, it's time to step aside for our first break. We're running a little behind. You're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. Coming to you live from the Go Live Vegas studios in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's get ready. Come on, folks. Give us a call, 702-329-6947. Press the number one. We love the interaction in the chat room, but we'd love to talk to you in person. Why? Because the chief says so. We'll be right back. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit you, hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over and listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! If inspiration is the beginning, where does it lead? Experience the 2021 Mazda 3 sedan and see where inspiration can take you. Grab the brass ring in a 2021 Mazda 3 with exclusive FSW discounts at Finley Mazda. Get Garth today at the Valley Auto Mall. This is John Cena. I just, I just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast, Thoughts Count Anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count any of this? Is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because they do.
done. <laughs> the producer's not allowed to have any more donuts. No, you would, th- you would think by having a donut, all the sugar and everything in it. He yeah, already I'm had sorry. three. Can you turn up the volume and send my mic just a tad in my headset? Because, oh, there we go. I sound like I'm talking like 9,000 miles away. All right. I like that music. It sounds mm, good. Yeah, I love it. Welcome back. Thoughts count anywhere. 702-329-6947. Give us a call. Um, Talk to me. Royal Rumble. I just wanted, we have this under the W. I'm going to go into the WWE stuff. Okay. Uh, which I didn't see. Royal Rumble, we'll, we'll end with this, at least with this one. Sorry. You saw something that Royal Rumble is going two for one? Yeah, they're doing two for one tickets for the Royal Rumble. Where's that going to be? St. Louis. Oh. Right under the arch. <laughs> Outside of <under> the arch. <laughs> McDonald's arch? Could be at this point. Who knows? So two for one if you guys want to go down and see it. Now, last night on SmackDown, we've listen, we've read over the last Wait a minute, let me let's just say year to broaden the parameter. Let me get my SmackDown notes here. Na- go ahead. Natty, I'm who's ready. been in the record book. Yep. Uh, quite a lot. She uh, most pay per view appearances, uh, most couple of other things. But last night, she was part of another record setting match on SmackDown. <laughs> uh, her uh, opponent that night was Aaliyah last night. And in record setting fashion, she lost in how fast? 3.17 seconds. That's pretty fast. Now, Daniel Bryan, all the chance of eight seconds can go away now, right? With Sheamus? Yes. <laughs> True. Yes. So, Natty last night. Posted a reaction to her um, loss last night. She says, to whom am I concerned? Last night I succeeded in achieving another world record. Yay! However, the person who also was a tiny part of my wonderful achievement is now trying to take all of all my credit. To this end, I've now instructed my assistant to immediately petition the Guinness judges, the Olympic Committee, and the Hollywood Foreign Press to have her record overturned. Assistant note, she has. I will. I wait their response after they think on it absorb and reflect from the desk of the three-time Guinness world record holder. <laughs> 99 party. So from the desk of thoughts count anywhere, Natalia, you suck and you lost. <laughs> Almost as bad as uh, Nia Jax's ass bump on the, off the ring. Well, that's the whole story, right? <laughs> Do we have anything <laughs> else to say about it? No, I think that's the whole story. There I, you I go. Know, so. Anyway. Hey, did you see where Nia's, uh, Nia's gone back into uh, doing uh, lingerie f- uh, for big women? Or I did big, not. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pleasingly yeah. plump women. Yeah, over- she's, oversized. She's gone Good back well, and doing Well, she was doing it. that before. And, and I got to tell you, uh, you know, a picture po- popped up on Facebook yesterday. You know, she's actually a very attractive woman. She absolutely is. Very attractive. And is your screen cracked? Did you? <laughs> Before, you know, when she was in her, I think are late. T- are you talking to me? I think in her late teens. Huh? I think in yeah, her, I'm talking to you. I think in her late teens, I early. I was talking to him. I think in her late teens, early 20s, she was not built like she is today. <clears throat> like a she, brick house? She, no, she was more of a uh, uh, regular <clears throat> sized woman. I hate to say yeah. it that way. Before whatever happened. Listen, she's healthy. She's happy with who she is. If she's going back into modeling, yes. God bless her. Yeah. Because she's happy with who she is. And that's Stay out of the wrestling be. ring. Exactly. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Plus, she, I read yesterday. Or did, come back as a manager. Don't come back ever. Never. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> uh, I found a story on my MSN link that came up. They did stories on about five people doing what they're doing now post their WWE post. career. Like like uh, uh, Bo Dallas, they were talking about he loves to cook. He's got a cooking YouTube channel. Correct. He and his uh, significant other, Liv Morgan, they're in right. real estate together. But Nia Jax now, she's doing something. She's an advocate now. She's got a site if you, if you need... Uh, support if right. for your mental health issues and things right. like that. She's created a business, and I, I wish I could remember the name. Holdmentalhealth.com? No, no, that would be too easy. <laughs> um, but if you need support, you go to this website, and her website gives you um, information on how to find people for support, doctors, whatever you may need. So she's giving back to the community. I think that's great. Listen, I think in a lot of ways she got a, the RSA, raw deal, but all the stuff towards the end of her career really has not helped her legacy within the Annoy family and all of that to say the least. But uh, be that as it may. All right, a couple things of note this past week. Let's start with Raw. We have new uh, Raw Tag Team Champions. A little surprising, I think. Alpha Academy defeated RK Bro. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to pull that one off, especially with Otis actually pinning Randy Orton. I didn't think that was really going to happen at all. It's interesting that Orton took the pin, right? Yeah. 
So where do you they where do they go now? RK Bro, do they break up? Do they get their return match within thirty day clause? I mean, who knows, right? I think they'll probably get their return match at the Royal Rumble, and then Randy Orton turns on. Because Randy isn't Randy in the Rumble, or Matt or Riddle is one of them's in the Rumble. I would imagine they'd both be in it. Well, we know that uh, on the ladies' side. Speaking of turning, Nikki Ash is no longer a good superhero. Yeah. She's a villain. Turned out Rhea Ripley, which I think many people were expecting that breakup to happen already. I want to go back to Riddle and Orton. Okay. I, th- I think Riddle's gone down to NXT, and I think Randy's going to Randy's going to go after the championship. That's what I think is going to happen. Okay. Well, we'll see who the champion will be after Royal Rumble. Correct. Lashley or Lesnar. Correct. And who? Ca- well, never mind. Story came out um, this past week. Also, Randy Orton's name came up in an article that. Our good friend uh, uh, Killer Cross did recently with another show or whatever it was where he was hoping that one of his programs would have been against Randy Orton. Yeah. That would have been a Now, it may still happen somewhere down the line in different capacities, but that would have been a great series of matches to see the two of them go at it. That would have been amazing. I saw that article. He was supposed to work with, was it Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, a couple other ones, and possibly Roman Reigns. I was like, Right. I saw Roman's name in there, too, but... I was like, God damn, WWE botched fucking millions of dollars. (laughs) There could have been. I hate that place more and more every interview I see. We've already talked about that, sir. Once again, proof he doesn't listen to his own shows. uh, Sorry, we love we love him anyway. (laughs) Like the teleprompter comes up. Oh, we talked about that like ten minutes ago. (laughs) You know, you know, it's it's funny that we're talking about Kevin and. who he really wanted to to wrestle with in WWE. But isn't it interesting, a couple months after he's been released by WWE, he's getting ready to do a movie. That's cool. Yeah. You know, so... So is Eva Marie. I know you're going to be run to get a ticket for that. <laughs> oh, I'm buying him the DVD, the digital copy, <laughs> the Blu-ray, <laughs> the poster. It's at least I... At least... <laughs> At least I don't slobber, son. Uh, okay, next. What's wrong with slobbered slobber? over her for what? <laughs> Hubcaps. Turn this a hundred different ways. I know. <laughs> Hubcaps. I'd like to say this is a family show, but not always. Anyway, um, all right. Uh, Roman Reigns, listen, achievement as it is, over 500 days as a Universal Champ. That's pretty impressive. We acknowledge you, Roman. We acknowledge you, you absolutely. You, you're the man. 500. Jeez Louise. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Good for him. And I, you know what? Crazy. Like back in the Attitude Era, that belt switched like but underwear. You, you know, let as me many ask, times as the Big Show became a heel and a face. You know, <laughs> you know let me ask you a question. It, and I asked this last week. Why did they? Why did they have to switch Seth Rollins over to wrestle Reigns now? Because Reigns has been champion 500 days, and he's and already well, beat everybody on SmackDown. That's it. There's nobody left on SmackDown. Except for, I think it was supposed to be Drew, but because of his neck being hurt, yeah, but they yeah. had to do something, and they've but, already they've legit run out of challengers. But, but they already, but Drew and, and, and Roman already wrestled each other, you know? And Did, you know, Outside so, of, like, Survivor so me, Series, so I don't me, think they've had, like, an actual feud. So my thought is, why didn't they move Roman over to Raw? And then move Seth well, there, over. There's talk. Uh, but Seth was supposed to win the match uh, right. at, at day one. Day one so. Lashley wanted to be pulled out of that match, by the way. A story I read yesterday, the other day. Yeah. But there's also talk that one of the swerves after Royal Rumble, maybe that belt, that the champions and belts actually do switch shows. That came up as well as part of a conversation. I don't know how they. I don't know how they would effectively accomplish that. Well, I think we're all in agreement. Seth's going to beat Roman. You know, at least I, I hope so. At least that's what I see happening. Well, Seth has to turn face for that to happen, and we're seeing signs of that based on the promo last night that we saw on SmackDown. Yes. Uh, let's see what else I want to cover real quickly. And on another sad note, before we go to the Chiefs rant, Sonny just can't stay the hell out of trouble. She was arrested for weapon possession and terroristic threat charges against her current partner in life. Uh, and it was found allegedly that she was on alcohol and drugs, or they found that in her system Again, at the time of arrest. I mean, <sighs> I made a comment to you. It's a shame. I made a comment to you earlier. Mm-hmm. 
before our show uh, about Mr. Moxley. And I'm glad to see John's coming back, and I'm going to go here for a minute. I'm glad to see John coming back. I'm glad to see John was in a facility for longer than 30 days. Yep. Uh, he got tools, as I said to you, he got tools put in his toolbox that he can use in life. Uh, Sonny, on the other hand, um, you know, most of her treatment's been 30-day treatment. You're not going to learn in 30 days. I'm sorry. No. P people can disagree with me. Uh, I'm talking as an expert now, both as an alcoholic and as a counselor. Okay? Uh, so... The other comment I would make, Sonny, you need to get the hell out of the state of New Jersey because they're key. They're going, Everybody needs to get because, out of the state hey, of New because, Jersey. Because, because, well, I got the, out of there. because they're <laughs> going to keep pounding on you because they know Who you're, you are. Exactly. All right. Uh, one last uh, quick thing that I wanted to mention and I I totally escaped my mind. Well, it's your rant. Now, are you officially ready for your rant? I'm re I've been ready. Okay, well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We are, I guess, it could be rant part two. <laughs> sure. Unofficial rant, and now, oh, well, that was a pre show rant. How much, how much time do I have? You left still have your three off minutes. No no, 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 no. This will be your official rant, so you'll oh. start with the same three minutes. We've okay. got, it is now time for the Chiefs rant. <laughs> Good morning, folks. It is the Chief. It is my official Chief's rant today. My three minutes of fame is now 2.58. And I'm going to go this way. Knock, knock. Who's there? It sure as hell ain't Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Anyway. It sure as hell ain't Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman who? <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> pro wrestling, folks, is pro wrestling. I seen one of the biggest botches in a long, long time happen Monday night on Raw when... Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman did a knock-knock joke on Brock's opponent in the wrestling ring, Mr. Bobby Lashley. In my opinion, that's not professional wrestling. Shouldn't be allowed in the ring. If that's the best creative writing WWE could do, or if Mr. Paul Heyman wrote that piece, uh, in my opinion, Paul, you need to get the hell out of the wrestling business because the wrestling ring's a sacred, sacred four-cornered pillar to post. It's for wrestling. It's not for that type of entertainment. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. We're losing sight of professional wrestling. That's why it's called professional wrestling it's not called a comedy store so that happened then you go then you go to uh smackdown last night and mr roman reigns makes a comment about seth rollins wife that he'd rather rather wrestle her than uh than uh than him well, you know what? That's fine. That's all well and good. You want to do that, Mr. Reigns? Go ahead. And I hope Becky Lynch kicks you right in the balls and you swallow your nuts. Okay? That's not, that was uncalled for, too. That's not professional wrestling. So I think that between Mr. Vince McMahon, his writers, Bruce Pritchard, the professional wrestlers, all the storylines that are coming out, not just in WWE, AEW, Impact, all of you. You need to take a look at them and clean them up a little bit. Now, granted, I, know, I understand you're trying to get over to the people, but you know what? When you go and you see pictures online, whether they're true or not, 
that you're moving everybody to one side of the arena to fill it up where the cameras are shooting, you know, that's pretty damn sad. So maybe you really need to take a look at yourselves in the mirror. That's the Chiefs rant today, over and out. By the way, the, <clears throat> the Chiefs rant was brought to you by Brew Brothers Live from Fabulous Las Vegas. Wrestling memorabilia and collectible show every Sunday at 2 p.m. exclusively on the Top Rope Collectibles Facebook group page. If, you don't have, if you're not part of that page, simply go to the search bar, Top Rope Collectibles. Search it on Facebook and join the group. Brews, brew, brew, brew Brothers Live. Brew, 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 wait, wait a minute. I always want to say coffee. It's like uh, we're brewing I coffee. I have, I'm the one that's got. Give me the tea. Give I'm, me the tea. I'm the one that's got false tea. I know. It's called the Brew Brothers. I know, and I have it written that way, but it's brew, I think coffee, and it just met, fouls me up. Anyway, check them out. Nicholas and uh, Thomas, every Sunday at 2 p.m. on Facebook. We Thomas, that, them. Thomas that, that's your man there, your Hall of Famer. You're always that's, backing up. He's, that's right. He's, he messed you up this morning. That's right. Well, listen, but I, I'll tell you, Thomas and Champ. The Brew put, Brothers. Brew Brothers. I'll just say Thomas and Nicholas from now on. Uh, <laughs> Thomas and Champ, during the conversation about the guys switching promotions, both said this, and I, and I remember hearing this. Fox doesn't want to lose Roman. On SmackDown. No, it's like the biggest thing in WWE. Right. So, so Fox probably put the fence up on, on any possible changes. And then, I'm sorry, Thomas, no, go says, ahead, go ahead. Thomas says to your, sh to your rant, he says, Vince isn't in the professional wrestling business anymore. Vince is in the sports entertainment business. And I agree with yep. that. Didn't you bring up last week, uh, a, if I remember right, a comment where you said Fox wanted to buy out WWE? I did. Totally. I did. And they and WWE said no. No. What happened was the price for the whole package was something Fox was not interested in. Okay. So instead they just negotiated for SmackDown. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, but I still th I think we're all in agreement. I think I think WWE. And Thomas, you can keep those type of comments to yourself. <laughs> I like I, how Chief was like ranting against the Roman Seth thing, and that was like the best thing on SmackDown by a it's, mile. It's not the first. I don't disagree with you. But there's another way they could have done it. Every promo nowadays seems to be very direct, uh, where they're yeah. not going in innuendo style, where, like, you you're, know, they're going direct. You're not building the story. You're not building the story. Roman like. and Seth are a built in story. They don't need to build a story. It's been like seven years in the making. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you want, you know, it's like you guys said, if you want to bring. Naomi in or you want to bring Tamina in with <clears throat> with Roman and then you want Becky and Seth build the storyline just don't Roman come out well I'd rather wrestle your wife than you you can't build a storyline with that it just can't happen well I think the story what's more insulting than to be like you're not even the biggest star in your own household I'd rather fight your wife and get a bigger storyline out of that and you know what when that happened, why the hell didn't Seth beat the shit out of him? That would have been a storyline. But yet he stood they there. They got like two more but, weeks but to yet, set Wait, shit wait, up. wait. But yet he stood there like a bump on a log and just smiled. Because yeah, he also knows that he's beat Roman every time they fought each other. <laughs> so Roman's going to beat him this time, maybe. I think they added extra intrigue in the arsenal because like what you said. And I, I'm agreeing with both of you. Because I agree with you, the story's already there. You don't have to oh, do much. No, no, I agree. I totally but agree added, with you, brother. But, but adding a little salt to the wound, so to speak, of that rivalry that already exists, yeah. you have to fuel it with something a little bit different, a little extra. So like you said, I, I like the backstory in that, hey, you're not even the biggest star in your house. What do I want to fight you for? <laughs> you know, I know he's getting his coffee. It's okay. And watch, he's going to get the donut in the No, minute. he's already had two. I saw the second <laughs> one before he we went on the air. So I hope, Raquel, I hope Raquel's not listening. Yeah, let's put him on blast. Jeez. Yep. Is there, well, <laughs> you, you got five seconds. Actually, five, I, four, three, two. I will say four. this. Raquel listens to the shows more than he does. All the shows. So she's an avid listener. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, we lo Guerrero. and we love her, too. That's still the greatest know. one of all time. Which one? <laughs> Who's Eddie Guerrero? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's, you know what? We should put that up. Paycheck didn't go through to you, either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bank account stopped working. Oh, no. We ought to make that a shirt. Who's Eddie Guerrero? <laughs> Said by Aaron Ellicus. <laughs> Uh, hey, he finally got one timed right. That's very good. All right. 
But good it was conversation. Funny because that was directly to Vicky Guerrero. I, I know that was listen fortunate, and you then, know, she, we then she came back on. <laughs> we, need, we need to get her back on. You know, I was singing about that. I will reach out to her. So, listen, I, I, still, love, I love her. Man. I still have Paul Ellering's number, who I met at CAC. I should reach out to him too. Because we got to yeah. start scheduling some guests in February. You know oh what? yeah. You know what? You're right. Get I in the have, mic. I have. <laughs> You're right, and I haven't even thought about it. That's okay. So that's my With fault. The, no, it's nobody's fault. With all the holidays and everything, we're getting back in the swing. It's, I didn't anticipate any scheduling for this month because there's been a lot going on. But I think we look into February. I'll reach out to Vicky. I'm going to put out De reach. Desert Shark. Who would you like to see us have on? It'd be funny. To, I know we wouldn't do it, but it'd be funny to have Jim Cornette on. Solely for the fact to hear him and Chief be like, no, wrestling should be like the 70s. No, it should be like the 60s. No, it should be like the 70s. Did Jim Cornette watch wrestling on the radio, too? That's oh, what hell yeah. oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> do, do you know how Jim Cornette started? Jim Cornette started as a photographer and writer for Pro Wrestling Illustrated yeah, for Bill Actor. That. What the hell oh, is that? That's the sound of a radio, trying to tune in a radio. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we should just play charades on this show. Beam me up, Scotty. Name no, that sound and, in three and, clicks. But, but seriously, he, he started as a photographer and writer for, really? I did not for know Bill that. After Pro Wrestling oh, Illustrated wow. back when he was in his 20s. Wow, I did not know yeah. that. Yep. Then he went from a camera to a tennis racket. Go figure. So Darza Shark <laughs> puts in the chat room, Randy Orton once told Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero isn't in heaven, Eddie is in hell. Next thing we see is Rey Mysterio kicking the living shit out of Randy Orton. <laughs> So, anyway, good stuff. All right, let's uh, let's step aside for our second break, just a tad early. What do you say? Hey. Certainly. All right, because this way it'll give Aaron time for another donut. Anyway, you're watching Thoughts Anywhere. We'll be right back. If inspiration is the beginning, where does it lead? Experience the 2021 Mazda 3 sedan and see where inspiration can take you. Grab the brass ring in a 2021 Mazda 3 with exclusive FSW discounts at Finley Mazda. Get Garth today at the Valley Auto Mall. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is John Cena. I just, I, just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast, Thoughts Count Anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? I just, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much, congratulations, and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because they do. Once again, some of the... <laughs> Can someone take a screenshot of this teleprompter, and I'm posting this? No, no, let me... Listen, it's important stuff you have on there. Let me... <laughs> Send it, I'll send it over. <laughs> oh, Lord. Once again, proving that We're some trying of, to be told what the Royal Rumble is. Some of the best conversation, as always, <laughs> happens when the cameras and microphones are off. I'll, I'll send it to... Can you put that in a chat room? Can you put a picture in the chat? No. I've never I done wish. that. No? Let's see. Overview, live chat. Oh, man. What happened to my chat box? Oh, there it is. No, well, I'm just waiting to they see a will thing. Like professional wrestling is a sport. They will performed in a, in a wrestling ring with wrestlers. Uh, you know, you would think after doing the show, going on what three years? Come August, we're two and a half years. This is probably well, it is now. Thoughts Can Anywhere is the longest running show on Go Live Vegas, right? I mean, it is. Okay, better right? recognize. But that's right. Acknowledge <laughs> us. Acknowledge us. That's damn right. It. It's the A show, and especially since we're now doing two hours for the last. Four or five months. Yeah, right. This is SmackDown. That ain't Raw, folks. Or anyway. Um, I don't like the red bland. You, you would think he had learned a little something about wrestling outside of the Hart Foundation. Don't you Natty think? sucks. 
I would still love to get Natty on the show, but so that'll, would I, but that'll never happen now. <laughs> How did you lose to Aaliyah in 3.17? Well, seven. let's talk about that. You that brought up funny. why. What's you that? brought up possibly why. She lost. She she oh, put her over Aaliyah, because? Aaliyah. I just sent it to you. Aaliyah is supposedly from up in the area where the hearts are from, and Natty has known her most of her life. So uh, She helped. She helped, and, you know, I, I, I applaud, uh, you know, getting in the ring for your first match uh, and putting her over like that. Well, um, she's done that in the past for a lot of wrestlers oh yeah. where she's put people over. You know, I mean, it's time to think about it. How many years has Natty, you know? 20? Has she been? Is I, I'm she, guessing. I, I don't know. Has she been there that long? 15 years? 15 years minimum, I would think. Yeah. And she has not held it. In my opinion, she's not held enough titles during her time. Yeah, she was a diva champion, right? She had the SmackDown belt while she was she's a heel, ta- but she's been tag champs. Yeah, but she need, She really should have a solid single run as a champion and not be a thirty day belt holder. You know, I mean, this is my opinion. Give give her some give her some some credit and due for what she's done for for WWE. Well, unfortunately. I don't disagree with you, but I think that you're going, you would have to, sh- Charlotte would have to go away for a while, or Becky would have to go away for a while f- to put a belt on that. Yeah, but wh- you would wh- need all four horsewomen to get hurt. But, but, all of them. But here's the thing, that, and again, I'm just on out there, the no, no, conversation. No, so let's say, let's say, and I'll pick either one of them, Becky or Charlotte, it doesn't matter. They drop the belt to Natty, and why? Why does it have to, because to me, if someone goes away for a while, and we don't see them, and then they come back and they win the belt back from that said person, in this case, Natty, in our conversation, doesn't that diminish the value of her being champ? Just like, listen, just like Big E holding the belt, everybody wanted Brock to win it. He held it for four or five months, finally getting it off of Lashley, but then all of a sudden Brock is back, now Brock has to get it. Well, listen, Lashley, uh, not Lashley, Big E took the pin clean to lose. Why can't Charlotte or Becky take the pin to, to clean to lose, and they go on to wrestle to try to get back in the championship hunt? Why do they have to disappear? Because you're making too much sense ah. of what's called <laughs> professional wrestling, not sport, for- not sports entertainment. Professional wrestling. Thank our friend Jennifer McCord, who's out in Hawaii. Uh, she follows Aaron Zauer and some of the other stuff. She, she's in the chat room. Hey, nice. Jen, what, what island are you on out there? And it's not Staten Island, I can guarantee you that. Uh, she says, aloha, guys. I don't know anything. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know anything about wrestling, but I still enjoy your show. Now, Thank that's you. a fan. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer. But Same I, with Aaron. Same with <laughs> The engineer. No, but he's been around there for three years. I think Jennifer, I don't know, how, I don't know if Jennifer even, you know, why she's tuning in, but she, I appreciate her following. Anyway, um, but yeah, so but that's why, do they have to, why do they have to go away for someone to wear a belt? That, you know... I ask her. Is WWE and creative have had a boner for the four horsewomen <laughs> since they freaking got there? Well, shame on them, them for not taking advantage. I don't blame any of them either. But she, she's on Oahu, suburb of Honolulu. Nice, got gotcha. you. And she's a great lady. She's she and I have been connected on here for over a year. She comes to Vegas periodically, so I'm hoping maybe we can get her on. Hopefully, hopefully one of the next trips she comes out, she still has a massage waiting for her at uh, Hand and Stone from the last time she was in. But, yeah, if she, we can coordinate that. I'd love to have her come down uh, to the studio for a little bit. You, All right. You know, I think one thing that, that uh, is missing nowadays, back in the day when I watched it on the radio, um, there was a top ten men's list, a top ten women's list in each federation. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's how you moved up to get your championship shots. Right. Today, they don't have that. Oh, no. AEW doesn't. Look, Rhea, Rhea Ripley, when she, when she was brought up to the, to the main roster, she marched right into the ring that first night, demanded a championship match, and got it. Yeah. yeah. John Cena did the same. Yeah. Uh, again, John Cena did it with Roman last year. They brought him back. All of a sudden, he's going for a championship. Uh, Sev says here in the chat room, he agrees about Natty being a great wrestler, great worker, com- uh, complete pro, but... Does Natty sell tickets? Are people coming out to see Natty as a champion? But I will say this, though. Hang on. If the chase, let's say she wins, okay, the people that she may beat as a champion, she's ready, will have beaten whatever prospective title holder, and then you have some of the best of the best, whatever's left, of the roster chase her, and she beats them, and they build her to be a 
powerhouse, using a word, she, I think she will eventually because she's beating everybody there is to beat. She needs a mouthpiece then. I would be okay with that too. But I'm saying, I mean, look, if good creative is in place, they can build a natty who's been around a long time, who is very well respected in the industry. And let's say she gets a run as an individual. Does she sell tickets? Look, she still has the heart name part of her. She's always going to be associated with that. And I do believe that if they build her right and she's beating some of the best of the best within WWE and retains for a while, people will come out to see who she's going to wrestle next and beat. Will she win? Will she not win? They can build her to be, the per be a person to sell tickets. How do you build her up like that after she's already lost to all of them a hundred times in the last seven years? How many times have we seen somebody? Listen, why does Dewdrop get an opportunity to go for a title? I Bianca Belair still has not officially gotten her rematch by herself with Becky. There are no rematches. I told you that no, last I week. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how you fix Natty. All right. And Natty doesn't need fixing as a professional wrestler, in my opinion. Thank you, Thomas. Great comment. All right. However, comma. There's only one person that needs to come back into WWE and walk down the ramp with Natty Neidhart. And Natty, I guarantee you, would start selling merch. And that's her uncle, Brett. Okay? And you may disagree with me, and it's already happened once before. Of course. Okay, which I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm going to tell you what. Brett could come down as her manager, and you could start a feud with Brett and Natty and Ric Flair and Charlotte, and you could write good storylines. I've already done that. You could write good storylines, and Natty could win the belt off of Charlotte. Okay, they that's did. how you do it. They did that in NXT already. That's NXT. Now NXT is 2.0. Bring it to the main roster. <laughs> I feel like I'm being punked at this point. <laughs> I told you I don't slobber. Uh, already discussed, Mr. Producer. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ashton Kutcher? I swear he's behind that curtain. What is this guy doing? <laughs> On the teleprompter. Well, but it came we out talked yesterday. about it 10 minutes ago, we, man. We, we talked about it. He, again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there must be a time delay <laughs> from I think the desk to our teleprompter. I just think he's messing with us <laughs> now, man. <laughs> All right, before we go to the top of the hour, I just want to play. I mean, I, I, I agree in principle with what you're laying out there. Matt, please chime in. But I think Brett, because he's now, now it may be different with the forbidden door being unlocked, okay? But early on when AEW started and Brett showed up there, yeah. you know, presenting the AEW, uh, AEW belt and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think prior to the Forbidden Door, I think it would have been a little tough pill to swallow for WWE to have Brett come back after appearing on AEW. Because I'm still not 100% convinced Brett loves WWE. I think there's still some stuff there. Now, whether it's because of Owen Hart not being in the Hall of Fame yet, and now that may even get delayed because of all the Hart stuff that his wife is doing over on AEW, which is doing great work for community stuff. No problem with that. But I don't know. I, I just don't know if enough, there has to be a lot of historical people in the stands. I'm not saying people our age, but people who know of Brett's wrestling fame to appreciate what he can bring to the ring as her manager to make it really worth something. I don't know if I want to see that as an old guard with Rick and Brett out there because, you know, they're going to mix it up once or twice. And you got the lineage stories there is well built. But I don't know if Brett's luster... Um, or if even for that matter, as Thomas said, does Vince even want Rick back with all the issues that they had? Oh, Rick's not coming back, but no. I can see Bret Hart. I can see WWE throwing a bunch of money at Bret coming back, mm -hmm. especially with that Owen Hart Cup going about to start. I can see him coming back around then. No, Rick, because Rick Bret and Martha don't get along at all. So I don't. I don't honestly see Bret getting involved in the Owen Cup as much mm -hmm. as even as he should. Right. But I can see WWE trying to counter this somehow with Bret Hart. Well, I, I, but I, I think, <clears throat> where did you get that story? Where did you get that story? We know that, but he's <laughs> sent back. <laughs> he's, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Those who may not remember. Brent For did, those of you who aren't sure, the phone number is BR549. <laughs> 
Seven zero two three two nine six nine. I don't. I don't even. And know if you don't know what that is, look up Hee Haw. Oh my God! Uh, he likes his wrestling like his TV. Ancient. <laughs> Junior Sample Sometimes. selling cars at his car lot. The number is BR five four nine. Oh my God! We've we've gone to pot on. This Back show. in new times, you go to Garth Wall at Finley Mazda. That's right. Proud. So, by the way, see, I, you guys, see, I led <laughs> you right into it, so you could be right. led to water. Oh my goodness gracious! Um, What's next? Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. You should have come in today to keep us level-headed there. Uh, Hell Brett no. Be, Brett can't be mad about Owen not being in the Hall of Fame, as that's his oh. sister-in-law's call. Oh, oh! I got breaking news. Okay, break it. Brett the threat got beat last night by Nick Xander. Oh, our uh, all right. There you go. Okay, when we come back, we're at the top of the hour as we start wrapping up this hour. First hour's already I know, so let's quickly hit bullet point stuff real quickly, okay? put the cheaters on. Huh? Corey Graves coming back. Big deal? No. Kind of, but I don't know if WWE's really going to let him off the commentary table to wrestle full time. Is he going to come back with, uh, what's her name? Carmella. 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 She's a tag champ now with Queen Selena. She doesn't need him right now. Or maybe he's going to manage for a while. I think he's going to wrestle. Why would you be cleared to be a manager? Well, I'm just thinking he's come, you know, while he's training to come back. Put him in NXT. If the whole point of like a manager is to be eye candy for whatever it is. Well, yeah, who yeah. the hell could possibly be eye candy compared to Carmella and Queen Zelina? Well, if he played, it certainly ain't he, Corey Graves. If he played it right, though, he could be a decent manager. Till he I'd gets rather in, see him wrestle. Till he gets in shape. I've never seen him wrestle. To be honest with you, I've never I before have. he got injured and, and whatnot. Was, he's an NXT tag team Wasn't he champion. an NXT before? Yeah. 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 Uh, what else going on? What was on those donuts? Did you guys get those donuts from the dispensary? Hey, uh, Good uh, bears. MLW filed an antitrust lawsuit against WWE for trying to interfere with their TV deal with Vice TV. Do they have a leg to stand on with those? I have kind of no yeah. idea. Because rumor has it, Stephanie, I believe it was, allegedly called um, uh, Vice and said, you know, no. Because it's owned by NBC and the whole Peacock thing that WWE put a kibosh on it, so it kind of screwed MLW over. And Thomas suggests, and this is a great idea, that Graves could be a spot in the Royal Rumble. Yeah? That's a spot. One second and you're done. Uh, Ciampo and Dunn, they both worked out in a main event the other night. Um, they showed a before and after picture of his beard that he cleaned it up a little bit. Also, maybe Rumble participants. I am completely convinced that WWE main event is where wrestlers go to die. To die. <laughs> All right. Xavier Woods is hurt again. He's out for about six to eight weeks. Uh, John Cena says he doesn't watch AEW. Drew McIntyre possibly going to miss the Royal Rumble. Possibly. I would say he's got to be a miss with the work they did on his neck, right? Yeah. And, and, what, and that guy, uh, Sheamus' partner that got his yeah, nose Ron, busted. Was that Braun Breaker, right? No, no. No, it's uh, Rich oh, Holland. Ri- yeah. That Rich Holland, yeah. He's probably out for a while, too, I well, would say. Well, up to a point where they do the surgery and they'll give him that plastic face guard. You All know. Sheamus has to do is give All him All you got to do is guard. borrow it from his tag team right, partner. Exactly. You know? exactly. All right. We're at the top of the hour. It's time for us to take our hour number one is in the books break as we get ready for hour number two. We're going to come back and start a discussion about whether you think, because we started this in the chat room, is wrestling saturated today? With that, that's Matt. That's Chief. Chief just saw oh, what's on the prompter. <laughs> I'm Aaron. Hour number two back right after this. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry, go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! If inspiration is the beginning, where does it lead? Experience the 2021 Mazda 3 sedan and see where inspiration can take you. Grab the brass ring in a 2021 Mazda 3 with exclusive FSW discounts at Finley Mazda. Get Garth today at the Valley Auto Mall. This is John Cena. I just just, just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? Is there a place that thoughts don't count? 
I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because they do. All right. Welcome back. Thoughts count anywhere. Hour number two. We are back. Hey, by the way, 702-329-6947. If, you're, if you have to leave the visual part of our show, make sure you download the Go Live Vegas mobile app to your phone. If you have Alexa at home and you're, you're doing something, you can't be in front of your screen or you can access Alexa on your phone or whatever, just simply say, Alexa, play Go Live Vegas radio. And guess what? We're hey, now Shan, on Alexa. you calling in or not? Or what? Huh? Call in, dude. 702-329-6947. Uh, we'll just hold up the show and wait for you to call in. Let's go. <laughs> wait, wait, dun, wait, dun, wait, dun, wait, wait, wait. This is a freaking dun. wrestling show. We don't, we don't need comments about football in our... Well, we have to talk about... Let's just piss Chief off. This is a sports entertainment podcast. Fuck you. <laughs> By the way, do we have a legendary name for our crack staff to look up as our Desert Shark? Yep. Shark is on the line, Mr. Shark. How are you, buddy? I'm good, gents. How are you? Good. All right. Great. What, what lit your fire, <laughs> dare I ask? Before I start, Chief, where the hell were you last night? I was home. I did, you said you were going to be at FSW. I didn't day. take a chance. Okay. Aww. Nope, nope, nope. Take a chance on me. Nope. Da, 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 I da, da, da. have not been feeling 100%. Oh, and yeah. I did if you're not, not 100%, don't go out. And I didn't want to take a chance. Uh, Good I for talked, you. Uh, I talked to one of uh, our female compadres, and uh, I told, told her I, we weren't going to be there. Neither Liz and I uh, were healthy all week this week, so I didn't want to give you shit. So he comes into the studio right. while he's not feeling well, and you and I will be on next no, week, man. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm only kidding. I'm only no, kidding. No, no. All right, what'd I can you, accept that. I, I don't care that. if you accept it or not. It's the truth. Oh, my you God. Know? Oh, hey, my. Hey, you Rain know. 2.0. You, look, <laughs> you know me, man. I, I call it the way it is. All right, right? Shen. Give it to us, buddy. Now, what's your, da- right, what's you your problem? Go for it. All right. I'll take the other, it happened uh, last week, so here it is. We get a call from one of our guy for our dispatcher saying, "Hey, there's some guy that's throwing rocks at people. Can you go look at it?" So we go over, and one of our bike officers find him, and this crackhead is just throwing uh, like pebble rocks at him, like it's fastballs uh, on a baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, he tells us his name is Dr. Wayne, and he said he has a cure for cancer, and don't touch him. I have no idea what was his problem, but he seemed to like me a lot because when we put him in handcuffs, like his hand was like right by my chest, and he started like, goochie, goochie, goo. Oh, my. <laughs> Maybe it was the same guy who was after Santana down Fremont Street. No, it wasn't that guy. I can guarantee you that. Jeez. And this happened, There's a lot of whack jobs in wait, this wait, town. Wait, this happened last week uh, on the property. It happened last week on the property. Did you, uh, did you, uh, gentlemen, take him uh, below decks, or did you keep him on the main level? Uh, we kept it on main level. That's when the metro came in, and they just took him in the squad car. Well, see, that's where you made the mistake, man. You sh- Never mind. And I'll just leave you it take, at that. Take him to the dungeon. I'll just leave it at that. Shan, buddy, otherwise everything else good? I love you, man. Hey, good show last night, I heard, huh? Oh, yeah, it was an amazing show last yeah, night. Yeah, my, my other brother from another mother, Mr. Uh, Thomas Burnett, he uh, was texting me last night with the results. So Yeah, uh, uh, I will say uh, <laughs> tag teams is starting to look very, very well. And don't be surprised. If you see uh, tenacious and greatness as tag champs, guarantee you that. Tenacious and gracious and greatness. greatness. Oh, greatness. Well, I think Bodie's going to be the next one to beat uh, Brett the Threat. Oh yeah, because he's Brett. Because that's uh, Brett's bitch. Yep. All right. Real, real quickly, Brandy says to you, you're just trying to give us a Baba Shant story. Anyway, real quickly, <laughs> dude. Listen, I've been following my sister. I've been following you on your track to get healthy. Where are you at with all of that? Kudos, by the way. What's happening with that? So 
So my plan is simple. After work, I get off and I go to the gym and I and I immediately go to the weight station. Um, right now, uh, last time I checked, I was at four thirty three. From so, and my heaviest, my heaviest is when I arrived to Vegas. I was at five oh two. Wow! So you're, okay. do, you're doing nice. good, my Excellent. brother. So you're just are you, you guys. you're working out and you've changed your nutrition. I hope right. Oh yeah, nutrition is a uh, is a big thing. Uh, I I count calories and I and I make sure I I drink at least seventy two ounces of water every day. Your size, I'm going to tell you something. Your size with you working out, you need more than seventy two ounces. I have to get about ninety to hundred. So you may want to think oh, yeah. to, you may want to think to up that. But uh, you know what I went through. So if you ever want to chat, you know privately at Facebook, we get together. Whatever, man, let me know. Uh, what's your goal? Just out of curiosity. Uh, my goal is like around 375, 375, mostly okay. muscle, though. Oh, that's okay. Well, you, you know, when you work out, fat burns and changes, changes into muscle. So you may not see numbers change, but your body structure certainly will. All right. Seriously, reach out to me if you ever want to talk about stuff because you and I are – I was on the path that you are now on. You know that. So whatever help I can give you, please, by all means, just reach out, man. I'm proud of you working I'll reach out, brother. Thank you. And and if you come into the studio, I'll make sure that I hide the donuts. No, we'll just get them sugar-free. So, like, No, you can – donuts are sugar-free until you swallow. Once you swallow the donut, that's when you have the problem. I'll stick to my protein bars. You can smell them all you want. Okay, (laughs) brother. All right, man. Thank you for calling in, but continue to stay healthy. Stay on. Love you, man. Love you. Take it easy, Shant. All right. Uh, yeah, Carlos, we were just talking about that. He watches his calories and intake. Carlos does say he changes eating habits, too. It's not just working out right on. All right, so here's the topic I want to get into, fellas, that, we, that I kind of teased before break. And we've, we kind of touched on this over the months and months with all these changes and all these new shows, okay? Is wrestling today, the wrestling product, oversaturated, okay? Um, or, you know, or is it already? Is it going to be oversaturated? Is it already, et cetera? Where do you guys think wrestling is today in terms of wrestling as a product being saturated or not? I don't necessarily think it's like oversaturated. I think that the big companies are just trying to play tit for tat with each other, like trying to dig at each other. So they're always going from like they're following each other from like town to town to like prove the other one wrong that they can like get more attendance and whatnot. But with the way the economy is right now and the pandemic and nobody has tickets to go to like raw one week and then dynamite two weeks later, right. and one of them's going to have to take a hit. So this whole tit for tat thing, I think is just hurting the wrestling community in general. Cause they're literally just like trying to get at each other and it's, kind of affecting everybody at this point. I think with professional wrestling going worldwide um, and not local like it was in the past where you had WWE up in the Northeast, you had NWA down south, that was, and you lived in those territories, that's the wrestling you got. Now, today, it's nationwide, so you can see WWE, AEW, New Japan, at one time ROH, Impact. So, I think it is too saturated, okay? I personally, if it was me, I would go WWE, you go one night a week. AEW, you go one night a week. Uh, Impact, which is one night a week. And if ROH comes back, they go one night a week. So you, you still have, you know, you have four nights of wrestling. But on the flip side, look at how many wrestlers you have up on the main rosters now that are, um, they're not going to, you know, take a dive and, and not go, not stay up on the main rosters to be on TV. That's their, you know, that's their livelihood, and that's where they're making their money. So I think it's a double-edged sword. If you're listening on the app or on Alexa and you want to chime in on this conversation, please give us a call, 702-329-6947. Press the number one to get to the studio and give us your thoughts uh, as well. Of course, we'd love for all of our uh, listeners and followers to call in direct. 
We would love to have the conversation. Okay, so let me ask you this hey, question. Hey, where's my man Sean Hyde today? I don't know. Maybe if WWE was forced to be on one night a week, they'd be like, catch our super show from 6 to midnight. Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, and you, you, But you kind of touched on something. Chief, you just talked about, and you kind of said, you can go to Raw one night, you go to AEW one night, et cetera. Back in my day, <laughs> you know, wrestling was not as overexposed on television as it is today and, and social media. That's okay. So when you don't have as much on TV, your live events, whether like back in the day, MSG was the mecca. They had only had a pay-per-view once a quarter there yeah. and they had the builds, right? So MSG was going to be filled to the rafters with 20,000 people. Instead now with, with TV being so, you know, these, I'm sorry, with wrestling companies being so overexposed on TV and social media, that's why we see pictures, aside from the fact that some will question the you know, creative writing and the product, that's why we see these pictures cropping up of arenas being half empty, pe people being moved to, told to move to fill the areas. Now, how long, the, and, and I'm going to ask this question before I finish my comments, MLW, any ideas how long MLW has been around? And GCW, for that matter. A couple of years. Major League Wrestling? Yeah, MLW. How long are they? He says a couple of years, roughly. How long do you think they've literally been around? And same thing for GCW. Same question. Uh, well, one time MLW was just a local company in a local area. Okay. They've been around for over 10 years. Okay. So then how, how did they now get into mainstream conversation? Just 2002. Like GC, 2000, that's when they started. Okay, thank you. So they've been around a lot longer. They've been around... 20 years. 20 years. So how did MLW grow from a local product to really being part of mainstream conversation? What I just as said. As well as is what? What I just said. They, they started in a local area. They built their product up. How did they build it? With the fans. So what did they do? I'm, I'm purposely leading you down because I, I want to hear your okay, answers on this. And uh, this I have ain't 20 for questions, no, no. so I'm going to let you give the answer. No, because I, I'm asking questions that I don't know. Well, Same thing with GCW, and here's why I'm going to yeah, ask you Yeah, that. you do know, because when we were back in the East and it was WWE, where did we watch it? WOR TV. Yes, correct. Okay, WPHL in Philly. Right. Okay, it didn't go out of the territory. Right. That's how MLW started. Okay. They started up in the Milwaukee area. Right, they still okay. are up there, aren't and they? And they are still up there. Okay. That's where they started. That's where they built it. And then they went to a national television, well... BN is, that's not a national TV station. How about GCW? Now, I know they're from Jersey, right? Jersey, they're from Atlantic City. Okay. I don't think they're mainstream, though, are they? Well, I, check, can you tell me how long GCW has been around? January well, of 1999. I mean, so they're, okay, so a year or two even longer. Well, I think GCW is sort of mainstream right now, more so than MLW. What channel are they on? They're not on a TV channel. I'm not, I didn't ask that part. And I, I'm going somewhere with this for a reason, Okay. GCW is part of conversations, though, and maybe they're more known on social media platforms rather than a TV network because that's been an issue with Impact, right? Impact yeah. is on Access, AXS. Not a whole lot of people have that unless you have either cable or, like, I have it on satellite. I, I've got cable and I don't have it. Right. So my, my point being is this. GC, this is just me speaking, okay? My experience and knowledge of these two companies specifically, okay, I had never heard of until the last 18 months, maybe maximum. How did I learn about MLW? Somebody mentioned a guy by the name of Hammerstone. And so I went and checked him out at this match he had about a year and a half ago. And I was so flippin' impressed that when I had an opportunity to meet him at FSW a while back when I was uh, doing some ring announcing for them, I had an opportunity to say hello to him, compliment him, tell him how impressed I was. Now Hammerstone's name is out there. MLW's name is, is getting out there because of things like this. Now, GCW, hell, until Effie started showing up in this area up here with Versus and, and BBW and all. And now Effie's name, you're seeing him on social media with GCW, Matt Cardona going there, Moxley. Oh, you know, all of this stuff going on, these guys now are becoming broader. Companies are becoming broader with this. So in my mind, I'd never heard of these companies. Ring of Honor, I'd heard of. I never really watched them. But now I would almost put Ring of Honor in between the MLW and GCWs up to... The big guys, they're somewhere, they were somewhere in between just because of history, and so many of today's great wrestlers came through ROH, right? ROH well, is way higher than between those two. Well, but they're somewhere in between. They're not AEW and they're not WWE. I think part, right? I think No, part, they're like right below them. Okay, though. so but they're in between. I okay, think, that's fair. I, I think part of it is, though, too. Yes, Aaron, Kevin Ash was at GCW. Is, is um, 
independent wrestling, okay? And even though um, Moxley's with AEW, mm -hmm. he's able to go to GCW. No, I understand okay. that. And, okay. and that's in today, but that's putting a lot of exposure now, on GCW. Now with MLW, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, you got Hammerstone there now. Right. You've got Davey Richards there now. Mm -hmm. You've got Homicide there now. You've got uh, Jacob Fatu there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if um, a friend of ours might end up going to mm -hmm. MLW also. My point is, is that with these companies now... So with those type of names, the companies right, oh, are built. Perfect. I, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. That's exposure. Okay. My point is, is that five years ago, how many people really heard of MLW or GCW? And the reason I say that now is because my comments, I'm, I'm going down the path of agreeing that I think the wrestling market now, in terms of the consumer dollar, is very saturated. Okay, I think social media helped them grow a lot, too. Well, well, right, because that was, that's what I said when Chief asked what channel they're on. Well, they're not I'm really on a channel. They're on social media, and I think more eyes can get them on social media than on TV nowadays, you right? Have, I mean, you, have, you have WWE on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Tuesday night, you have WWE. NXT. And it, right. Wednesday night, you have AEW. Right. Thursday night, you have impact. Friday night, you have WWE and AEW. Saturday night, you have MLW. Sunday night, I'm not aware of a wrestling program on Sundays. I'm not pay per views once a month. No, well, that's it. But I mean, as a regular TV, right? Uh, so, no. so six six days a week, you have wrestling shows on. Okay. And I think part of it is storylines. I how agree. Go how good are your storylines? Are people <coughs> going to keep watching? Uh, are you an upstart company like an MLW? Um, so let me ask you this question, and, and I agree with what you're saying. I, I'm not sure that the upstart stuff, though, uh, again, having the crossover guys to the MLW and GCWs does help brand awareness, and that's I know how they're growing. So here's my question to you. And I'm asking this not as a knock on anything. I want your input on this. You guys follow FSW a hell of a lot more than I do. And we know some major stars that are out there came through the FSW chain, right? Yeah. FSW, would you not agree, locally is a fan favorite. Hell yeah. Okay. Why are they not as prominent as, I'll just say, an MLW GCW? Why are they not out on a more national stage? Now, they do get talked about because people know Killer Cross came through. Chris Bay came through FSW. Well, you, can't, you go next... And I'll just say this: You go next month, you're going to see. Killer, I know. You're going to see Killer Cross and Jacob Fatu going at it against each other. Right. You're going to see Brian Cage, mm -hmm. Hammerstone, and Kenny King wrestling in the three way. That's big ass name people. Sure. What channel are they going to be on? Uh, Fight TV. Okay, they're not on open TV though. They have people have to have. I have no idea how to get Fight TV, but that's a social media platform, is Th it not? That's. It's not a TV channel. No. So no. my, my point is, though, is that for just... Do they always do their shows on Fight? Yes. FSW? The yeah. big ones. The big ones? The big okay. Ones. Yeah. But you don't hear them... Yeah, Fight TV people know, okay? But they're not talked about on that level. But great people do come through FSW, uh, FSW as well, so kudos. If you go, you know, you go... Ar and, and I'll say it. You go Arizona, California, and Nevada, mm -hmm. okay? The big names are... FSW, mm -hmm. Santino Brothers, and P P PCW, is it? The one in Arizona? No, the one in Cali. Oh, that I don't PCW. Well, how about is that the one that puts the, the big show on? How about our buddy MK? His comp his, the one that he's affiliated with up in Utah. They're an upstart. They're getting how, how long are they? How long th three years. Three years? Manny, yeah. Manny and... Uh, Man, he started it three years ago. Okay. And okay. now, you know, now Al Snow's uh, wrestling school's up there. So okay. they've got that. They've got know, a feeder in a way. They've got that build up up there okay. now. I, I guess my point is that what I'm asking is that as, as wrestling continues to do its thing as it is, right, the MLW's, GCW's now become part of the bigger picture of places people can go to right. to see wrestling. Right. So I think from the standpoint of, of what's available – is so much that I do believe wrestling today is somewhat saturated. I, I do. And it's in the tent. Storylines aside, I'm not, I wasn't even cro crossing that part because we know storylines is what can draw people. But as companies and what's available, 
for, for wrestlers to perform. And God bless them. They should be able to wrestle anywhere that they want to as independent contractors. There's just so much of it. And sometimes too much is bad. Well, that's why. The indies are like the territories then. You ask, like, if you go to the East Coast and be like, hey, did you see that guy from FSW? They'd be like, what the fuck is FSW? Mm -hmm. They don't know because it only goes so far. Right. So no matter how big of a star you are, you're only a certain part of a, you're only a biggest star in, like, one state compared to the whole country. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why. PWG, by the way, is what you're thinking of according to. Oh, yeah. PWG. Pro Wrestling. Yes. Thank you. I was just throwing so it like, out there. As I mean, far as like TV, it is there's a lot of wrestling on. Right. But if you're a wrestling fan, you're gonna watch it because oh, it and, is. But I think me, like the whole like me, I think the attendance is only being affected because they're literally following each other on a route to try to one up each other. Let me ask, and you you can only buy so many freaking wrestling tickets in a month. Let me ask you a question: Do you think it? Do you think with it being on six days a week, that's why it gets stale sometimes? They're all different shows, so not really. But just but the availability of watching wrestling, not talking about storylines or things like that. I think what, what she was alluding to is 2022, you don't have to watch it all live. Everyone's got DVRs. No, you can no. watch it at your own he, and, 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 that, and that's not what I'm saying, though. What, what I'm saying is, okay, last night SmackDown was on. Well... You kind of knew, due to this here, yeah. you knew what was going to happen on SmackDown if you wanted to before SmackDown ever happened. Pretty much all the wrestling in the last 20 years, you can so, be like, oh, so, this person's going to win, and you're right 99% exactly. so, of the time. So why, you know, if you have this access... I th I think this hurts wrestling, myself. I think that helps It does. It, like, ruins all the surprises. Yep. I think that over... And I think that's why... It Ahead, but WWE's kind of ruining their own stuff because they're just announcing surprises. And they're like, fuck it. And yeah. I think that's why it gets stale, Matt. It's, and, bec it's because of this. And I think that's why wrestling becomes saturated. Yep. We, we don't, look, I don't, I don't record all the shows like I used to, A, because I just don't have the time to go back and watch them all. So what do I do? I go on my, my phone and I pull up the sites for results and I read the results. If there's a particular something that went on, I'll go look for a video for it. But I just look at the results, I read what happens, and that's it. And I'm done in a couple of minutes because yep. I don't have the time to go back and watch all the shows. But I think social media has helped saturate the market because there's so much info that's out there. There's so much stuff that's out there that I think wrestling... I, I would not be disappointed if, let's say, WWE just went back to pay-per-views every two months. You can't go back quarterly. It's not like it used to be where you can build up storylines for three... They could if they had better writing. But there's just too much, and I think sometimes you got to peel back a little bit and give le less is more. You know, we, yeah. you know, when I went to Madison Square every month, when Vince's dad was running it, you knew you were going to have seven to eight matches, maybe nine matches at Madison Square. Okay, that was every month. We watched wrestling. You either had W O R T V Channel Nine Midnight Saturdays or, or the Spanish Channel, mm -hmm. um, or you went down into Philly, right. W P H L. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the WWE territory. That's all you got up there. Okay. When when Liz when I moved from Jersey area down into South Carolina and the Florida area. Then you got the NWA, okay? You got Dave Crockett territory, okay? So you had Dusty. You had uh, um, Dick Murdoch. You had Funk. You had those guys down there, Paul Jones, Abdullah the Butcher. They were down in that territory. That's what you got down there. Then when I moved over into Texas, okay, World Class Championship Wrestling, you had the Freebirds, you had the Von Erichs, you had uh, uh, Gino Hernandez, uh, and guys like that. The only one, the only territories I really didn't know were the West Coast. But you got up in the Oregon area, you had Billy Jack Keynes, you had Roddy Piper, you had, uh, um, I want to call him Pretty Boy Floyd, then. <laughs> that was his tag partner, Buddy Rose. Um, 
and and so back then you those territories that's all you saw on your tv and you read magazines to find out about the others and now today as i said we have all this social media here you don't even need a tv you can get everything right here and that's what saturates the market i think if you think this is oversaturated if there was territories and they got tv deals that'd be a nightmare can you no. imagine trying to watch like 50 different wrestling shows in a week? Well, if okay, if you got TV deals, you're right. But see, back then, I feel like these four shows you, are on Monday, you, these seven you, shows are you on Tuesday. You couldn't get that, okay? The FCC has changed over time. And Vince McMahon, I'll give him just just due, is the one that got it changed. Thank God. Okay? To where it went nationwide. But on the flip side of it, when you had territorial, when you went to a town for a show, it was a packed house. There wasn't a seat to be had. I can remember going to Charleston, South Carolina. When I was stationed down there, we used to go to the Memorial Auditorium downtown Charleston. Okay, It had the, it had the ring, but then <coughs> up around it, it had a hole upstairs all the way around it. That place was packed. Uh, every Friday that they come in, NWA come, that place was packed. You didn't have a seat there, and that and that unfor that is what made money for the territories. But today, you know, the, who put the picture up in our chat room, uh, in our special chat room the other day, where it showed that just one side of the. Uh, uh, Venue oh, the was open. Right. Everyone's always taking those pictures, like because everyone's coming in too. So you can't really like validate that thing right. either. You know. All right, with that guys. There's always haters for like, oh, if you hate, like no, WWE, no. you have to hate AEW, and if you like AEW, you have to hate right. WWE. I'm not hating no one. So like one person will run in and be like, "Oh look, the place is empty because right. Roman Reigns is in here." Ha 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 ha. Right. Uh, Carlos adds, "We all they also had WCCW in Florida." All right. Great conversation. Yeah, World Class Championship Wrestling. We're going to step aside yeah. for our break um, here at the bottom of the hour. we got a lot more to do, including birthdays. And we'll do uh, one more run of commercials after we say goodbye at the top of the hour to get everything in. You're watching Thoughts Cut Anywhere. We'll be right back. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! If inspiration is the beginning, where does it lead? Experience the 2021 Mazda 3 sedan and see where inspiration can take you. Grab the brass ring in a 2021 Mazda 3 with exclusive FSW discounts at Finley Mazda. Get Garth today at the Valley Auto Mall. This is John Cena. I just, I, just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? I just, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much, congratulations, and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because they do. All right, well, we are back. Hey, did we get a countdown? I didn't hear nothing. No, we just showed up again. I, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. No, he did say five seconds. Oh. Oh, he said, he said, he said, I must have started listening at five. I better turn my hearing aids <laughs> up then, huh? He's like our first segment. He hears voices. He thought he said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got a lot to still cover, so let's get started. Let's talk about a do No, you know what I want to do? Exactly. Let's go to the hard to kill results. Hard to kill. Let's okay. do that. Chiefs play. We still got to make a, t a shirt out of that. WWE. The or toy. The Impact had like a killer pay-per-view. The the it's on the back. All right. I'm getting Under there. the part that says hard to kill results. <laughs> <laughs> the three quarters half final. We'll All see right. it on the teleprompter in All right, like let's 20 go. minutes. That's right. It'll be on dirt. He'll pop it up under my show. Anyway, by the way, uh, noontime. Join me on Aaron Zauer. Part two, Cynic and the Psychic. Uh, Mystic Mona will be in studio with me. 
And maybe I'm going to dive into a little bit about my book as well because my commercial my commercial's not ready yet. So I'll I'm going to call her and ask her who's going to win at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, there you, you go. We can play bets. You know what? Thomas Burnett did, was right on. Saturday and Sunday, ROH is on syndication, so we get wrestling seven days. A week. Yeah, but it's old stuff now. They're not in. There's no yeah, new production. Well, but you're right. They, still they still on. have it out there. Okay. Uh, hard to kill. Jake something. Was that really his last name, or he just yeah, forgot it? That's his name. No, just kidding. Jake something defeated Madman Fulton. Did you guys? Did you guys watch this at all? I mean, I watched we, the actual pay per view. Oh, so that was show. a pre match. Okay. No. Did, did you watch it at all? No. Okay. Was it on Fight TV? Yeah. Okay. How much do they charge on Fight TV to get a pay per view to watch? It was like thirty four ninety nine. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. I'll just read the results. Okay. Exactly. My- <laughs> You're missing out. I know. Mike Bailey defeated Ace Austin, Chris Bay, and Laredo Kid. Okay. I'm, just, I'm looking for Matt to give us an input on that. That was a really good match. Okay. Uh, Tasha Steeles wins first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match. I know one of the bumps. I was that- fucking pissed off. Why? Who did you want in that match? Chelsea Green. Oh, that's right. I forgot she was in that match. And you wanted Jordan Green. Neener, neener, yeah. neener. <laughs> I have a few Nobody pictures. wanted Tasha Steele to win that. <laughs> Nobody. I have, a few, I have a few pictures I could sell you. But anyway, I got, my new, I got the two new ones arrived yesterday. So I need to, no, Did kidding. you put them in the closet? No, my wife actually went to the mailbox. <laughs> you we, got we, called. We, we, were coming back, <laughs> we were coming back from dinner. We stopped at the mailbox. She, got, she says, what did you order now? <laughs> I said, I ordered just a couple of signed memorabilia pieces just to piss Matt, Matt Mullen off. And she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> if they're sticky, I don't want them. <laughs> they're not sticky yet. <laughs> they're still in the envelope. <laughs> By the way, thank you, William, uh, for getting those out so quickly. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm not saying that just because he just tuned in, but uh, top rope collectibles. Anyway, okay. Uh, but I saw, I mean, they had the, the uh, scaffolding and stuff across yeah. the top. I know one piece that I saw. I don't know who Jordan Grace was with hanging up there. But Grace took the bump from the, from, she was hanging from the scaffolding. Yeah. Took the bump down. There was, there was some hard bumps in there. It, from all indications, other than the question about the winner, the match seemed to be very well received. It was a good match, yeah. It's the wrong winner. Trey, uh, Trey Miguel defeated Steve Macklin to retain the X Division Championship. I'm hoping that that rivalry is done. Because yeah. since they were here in November, they've kind of been going at it. So True. It was a good match. It was cool to see Trey Miguel finally get the win on him. After all this time. Jonathan Gresham, who is the ROH champion, defeated Chris Saban to retain. Cross promotion. Good match. Hope they hope he signs with Impact or somewhere else also. Yeah. From what Jordan told me, uh, he's gonna he's starting his own promotion down in Atlanta. I read that online, yeah. Yeah. So that we'll see how long before that one becomes part of mainstream saturation. Yeah. Um, Vince McMahon blocks major WWE releases. I'd like to see. Finally. No, get rid of that. Look at the names that are on there, dude. Those were the first cuts a year and a half ago. Goodbye. Delete those. Delete those. From our crack producer, <laughs> WWE has released Braun Strowman, Aleister Black, Lana, and Ruby Riot. What's the date of the article? Well, somebody was sleeping at the switch. Whoever put what? What? Uh, what site did you get that on? Oh, where'd you freaking find this? <laughs> anyway. Oh. What was I saying? Um, I don't remember. Oh. So we're talking about John. Jonathan Grisham showing up in Impact would make sense because Jordan's there. But I read that also about him, them, yeah. him yeah. maybe doing his own promotion. Yes. Okay. So nobody outside of Atlanta will care. Check. <laughs> Josh Alexander defeated Jonah. I'm glad he got some retribution after the... I, I think I'm the only one that said uh, last week that Josh Alexander was going to win that No, match. I think I said I it think, too. I, had no, my faith. I know I no, didn't. No, no I want to go back to the Jonah, tape. I'm going to go back to the tape. And you said Jonah. I'm going to go back to the tape. Uh, go back to the Heath tape. Rhino. The chief was correct Heath on that Heath Rhino, one. Rich Swan, Willie Mack, and Eddie Edwards defeated VBD and the Good Brothers to win this hardcore war. Okay. It was a lot of weapons, a lot of bumps. Good match. Was it no DQ, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. They have all the sticks. Yeah. So, uh, Moose defeated Marcy and Matt Cardona to retain. We missed that one. Yes, didn't we, we certainly did. Wow. That was a good match. It was a cool spot when he power bombed Chelsea Green into Matt Cardona. Yeah. Who, who did? Moose? Yeah. Into Matt? Yeah. Well, talk about a soft landing, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and somewhat of a main event, Mickey James defeated Perazzo to retain the Knockouts Championship in a Texas death match. I think we called that. Yes. I thought Perazzo was going to win until like the Royal Rumble thing came out. Possibly. Yeah. That better be in some kind of contract that she has to come out to her impact music and bring the title with I her. I totally agree. 
Anybody who's coming to any... <laughs> WWE's already done more for Impact than AEW ever did. Anytime anybody who's going to come over from another promotion should certainly come out to their entrance music from that uh, promotion, not their old music. I totally agree. Um, so, all right. So that's that. Do we know when their next pay-per-view is? Any, I mean, I don't know if we know. I'm just curious if there was anything said at the end of I this I don't one. remember offhand. But we know it's a month, probably a month away. <laughs> we know that, right? <laughs> are okay. They, are they coming back out here? Supposedly in like March or April. March, April. I've March. heard. I think yeah. it was like Slammiversary from okay. what I've heard supposed to be here so so what do we think about mickey james uh retaining the belt and it's going to go to uh wwe with the belt what do we think about that uh, isn't that a cross promotion sure. gentlemen yeah we talked uh, about it last week the fr- that's what started and, and, five minutes and she and, and chiefs and chief said that uh there was going to be some cross promotion happening did mm-hmm. the chief say so that? who do you project that might be if a men's champion from anybody comes in who do you think it, they could bring in for the royal rumble as well, part of the forbidden door being open now, it, it could be it could be various people, various people. I I personally myself I, I like what the man said here. I think they should call Duke. I think get Duke in the Royal Rumble. I think Kenny Omega. That'd be a hell of a one. I'd, I'd I'd be, I want it to be like somebody not from WWE. See totally. See. We, we sit here and we talk. We've got our run sheet. We know what the hell's going on. But you know what? Entertain the public. Bring a Kenny Omega in. Bring, um, uh, well, even, you know, bring Moose in. Bring Nick Aldis in. Bring uh, Trevor, uh, what's his name? Trevor Murdoch. Trevor Murdoch in. Um, Ain't nobody going to care if he shows up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, who else? Who else could you bring in? Bring somebody in from Japan. You imagine if Okada popped up at the Royal Rumble? You know, bring some, do something. That'd be cool. Something like that that we're not expecting. I heard a lot of people online are like, I hope it's Jericho. And I was like, why? He's been uh, on like 10 Royal Rumbles. And I don't think Jericho's going back to WWE. In he the, supposedly, they'll all go back for a paycheck. Future. He supposedly has still a good relationship with Vince. Yeah, supposedly. So apparently, when he signed with AEW, and Vince was like, "I right, go for it," and then he signed with it, he's like, "Hold on, you did what?" Yeah. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> Carlos in the chat room says Jonathan Gresham's wrestling federation is called Terminus, T E R M I N U S. Thank and, you, brother. Uh, that rolls right off the tongue. Thank you, brother. And I'm trying the way he's got it spelled in the chat room. I'm trying to find out if the letters stand for something. You know, like it's a uh, how hey. it's abbreviation. Could I take your money if MJF showed up at the Royal Rumble? That'd be freaking amazing. By the way, do you have a veteran name that we need to show in the next 20 minutes? I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, there's one on the list that if... I have if a veteran pl- name. Can you just put up pictures of Chelsea Green? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell one to you. Anyway, there's one name on the birthday list. You can, you can use that one. That I would like... To- I would like our producer to see if he can get a before and after picture. You can you can use that of one. Ivan Putsky. You can use that. Look one. up Ivan Putsky if you don't mind. A- I V A N P U T S K I. If there's the right pictures up there, there should be like a before he got into shape picture, and then when he got into shape picture. So if you can find them, that'll be cool. So we'll, we're going to show that at the birthday list because um, I think that was the first time I saw a transition for a guy in his body that I was just like, there's no way that's the same person. But anyway, I'm I'm jumping ahead. So so what do you think of what would would I be able to take your money if MJF showed up at the World Rumble? Only if he actually wrestles. If he's just going to come in on a mic and do a mic promo somewhere. No, I mean no. actually get in the ring. I, I, would, I would consider it. I would ask for an AARP discount. Why? But I would ask for <laughs> Why what? You're not old enough yet. I have the card. I, you want to see the card? I, could pro- got, I am a card-carrying you, member of AARP. Uh, you are? Yeah. Why? 50, it's now 50. Why? Because I'm 57. I don't, I, I don't have that card. I've got the good card. Which one is that? <laughs> this one. We're going to now show our card. Sorry for the pause, folks. They're pulling out their geriatric that, cards in a competition. Yeah, that's a little different. That one. But I do, I do have. No. That, this there ain't no geriatric card, man. I didn't say it was a geriatric <laughs> card. You did. Oh, he did. All right. I got better senior citizen discounts than you. He's got his, too. <laughs> I got it right there, brother. <laughs> But, but, you know, I mean, I mean, in reality, you stop and think about it. And, you know, 
we t I talk about cross promotion and you know imagine imagine MJF going to WWE for the Royal Rumble or Omega going for the Royal Rumble or uh, having the Usos go over to AEW and wrestle uh, um, the Good Brothers, the Good Brothers, or the Young Bucks. Yeah. Okay. You do something like that unannounced, and and I agree with you. I I, lo I love what you said earlier. Have Moxley come back with Roman and Seth. Okay. Yeah. You do something like that. You don't announce it to no one. No one at all. You just don't. Three hours before the show, you put it in place. Carlos uh, puts in there, New Day versus the Elite. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I like that one, too. Carlos. That's why now that there's so many snitches backstage that when they try to do surprises, they hide them in like a trailer up until the point they're like, got to run them to the curtain. Because and get them out there because everyone's of, like, oh, so-and-so's backstage. That's right, because of this right here. Yeah. Yep. And and you do stuff like that. You surprise the fans. Like, I've been a wrestling fan so long. Like, I'll look for, like, news of, like, injuries and stuff like that. But if I see the word spoiler, I tried real hard not to click on it because I don't want to know. You know what pisses me off? When podcast or not, I still want to be surprised. When... When you go on social media and somebody puts out there, so-and-so won this match, and it hasn't even... And, and if you watch it on TV, okay, you haven't even seen it yet, but you got the damn spoiler. That just pisses me off. Well, what, what hurts is when you're pre-taping shows. Yep. That's, that's where the leaks can happen. Yes. Oh, the spoilers. All right. Uh, let, let's move on. Let's uh, go. Some My side fault. notes. Before. No, 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 no. You're good. We have a couple of things from the indie report. We have uh, birthdays still to do. Oh, that's the first one. Do you have a second one? Does it show any other picture of him before that? Damn. It's too bad. Not yet. Well, well, when we do birthdays, you can put that up there. I would love to find one of his original pictures before that. Putski. But all right. Uh, maybe he was smart and didn't put any of those old pictures out there. And you know his son wrestled. Too. I know Scott Putsky was in WWE for a short time. Yes. Okay. Uh, a couple of things to note. You mentioned uh, FSW Mecca. That's now at the Silver Nugget. Yep. Uh, yep. Let's see. Brody King uh, debuted on Dynamite this week. Now this is one I did not see this. So let's talk about this one. Wyndham possibly debuting for AEW on two twenty two twenty two, as that number froze on his latest video, and that date is on a Wednesday. That's interesting. I hope he shows up somewhere. These videos he's making are really cool. My chair? My squeaky chair that you leave me to sit on? Is that news from last week? I shrunk? You no, know, there's a lot of... <laughs> God, I'm sorry. There's a lot of wrestlers on the, and I'll use this, independent scene right now that have great creative minds that if they were only given the chance to develop their own character and use their own character in matches. I think they, <laughs> no, I don't even think, I know that they could develop better creative matches than the, what do you call it, booking committee, creative writing committee, for all the organizations. And I'm not just picking on WWE now. I'm going to go Impact. I'm going to go AEW, all of them. And we know two fellas. We've, we know Kevin's creative. Um, and uh, the Wyndham fellas, they're definitely creative, both of them. So I'll just leave it at that. Will he or won't he? That's the question. Who? That's the team. I'm I he hope so. I, you know what? He's a good wrestler. Mm -hmm. He's a creative wrestler. He, he kept us entertained to the point you didn't want to go get up out of your lazy boy and go to the kitchen and get a drink and some chips. Right. You wanted to watch the end of his match. 
that is a draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is more of that that's needed. So the quicker he can show up, I don't care if he goes back to WWE. God I'd, no, please no, don't. no. I, I'm I'm just saying this. I don't care if he does. I just want him on TV so that we can see a creative wrestling person. I want to see a Wyndham character that he doesn't have to get approved by a bunch of stand-up comedians. I would love to see him and his brother come out and his dad manage them and go up against Tully and his tag team in AEW. Okay. Is that FTR that he's still Yeah, with? FTR. Yeah. Then you've got Tully there, you've got Barry there, you've got Arn there. That's, that's, pretty, that's three pretty good creative minds in my opinion. Deanna Perrazzo, though she did not beat Mickey James, she did beat, um, what's her name? Roxy. Roxy. For the ROH Women's Championship. Yes, she did. Does that, is, I mean, look, it's, it's well, not like she did, uh, currently right now, it's not like she would have beaten Mickey James to win the Impact title. Is this relevant that she's the ROH champion for an organization that's not even... Roxy was an up-and-coming wrestler. I understand that. Okay. But, is that. but that belt, the feature that you're holding an ROH belt right now, does that mean anything in today's standards at this point? Yeah, right. just because they're on, like, hiatus or whatever. Ring of Honor is still Ring of Honor. Does, does it possibly mean that Impact and ROH are going to have a working relationship by the looks of Impact last week, that's uh, for sure, yes. And that's because? The ROH invasion between, uh, was it Mike Bennett, Maria Canellis, Matt Taven. Matt Taven, PCO. And there was one other guy, and I can't, the, the dreadlock general. Yeah, the guy with... Uh, I can't think of you. Vincent. Vincent, yeah. The dreadlock guy. Is that his nickname? No, Vincent the dreadlock, the dreadlock guy. guy. <laughs> but, I, but I knew if I said dreadlocks, he'd he would pick know up it would be. Uh -huh. yeah. Of course. Uh -huh. All right. So that's, that's listen. my three quarters half time was kicking <laughs> in. <laughs> uh, PCO officially signs with Impact Wrestling. That's a good get for Impact. You know how many more years does he have though? He's fifty-two or fifty-three, I think. Yeah, he's up there, but he's, he's still putting on killer well, matches. He so is. he is. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm just wondering how much more... Uh, Go until you can, but don't tarnish your own legacy. How, how much more Pierre Carl Lett has. Last those note. of you that don't know, it's PCO. La last note. Britt Baker has officially aligned herself with Adam Cole and Group on Dynamite. Yeah. That was and, awesome. And, and you know what? This goes in line with, like, why so isn't Naomi got a, part of the, the so tribe yet? So she know? got a kiss on, on TV last night. So what? Yeah. Who the hell cares? Me. Just get in the Me. ring. Get Me. in the ring and wrestle. Yeah. Okay? That's why it's called uh, professional wrestling. Sports entertainment, not sir. sports entertainment. Sports entertainment. Kiss my ass. Uh, apparently. No, thank you. It's too hairy. <laughs> how, do you, how would you know that? How would you know that? Huh? I finally it got you. It probably looks like How would snowman. you know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, Shan puts in there yeah. that um, what are we doing? AEW is not re-signing Marco Stunt and Joey Janela. AEW is dead to him now. <laughs> he's he's yeah, being facetious. Nobody's heard about Joey Janela on AEW for like yeah. a year. Exactly. Being and Marco Stunt is like a slightly taller version of Hornswoggle. Jo Joey Janela needs to go back to Jersey. All right, let's That's get into some birthdays. Let's the change gears. We got about hey, stop. <laughs> I'm still born. In, my sister still lives there, so please hey, be careful. Hey, I'll tell you what. Jersey All Pro Wrestling with Dan Moff puts on a hell of a show. Today's birthday list is being brought to you by Bruce Brothers Live, because I said so, from Fabulous. Whoa, we got a phone call. Right on time. Thank you for calling, Jason. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? What's up? What you got? Matt, you just got busted, bro, by Chief. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was my one for the quarter. Jason. That was perfect setup. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked right into it. Do we have to start he like... Said, Matt, I, I don't think you could have been set up any better than that. He, he walked right into that. I give him one a year. It's cool. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, that, that, so means yeah. gonna be, that means it's going to be dull one. the rest that of the year, That means it's right? going to be cold as hell the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Thomas Burnett says he's coming back in next week to help keep control of the show. <laughs> yeah. That's if I let you in. That's right. Any Might other? need somebody. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, really. Anything else you got before we go to birthday, sir? I uh, just got to say um, the thing with Adam Cole and Britt Baker is awesome. That's for sure going to be a good uh, combination. And we'll see what happens at the Rumble. Right on. Coming up in a couple of weeks, that'll, that will have yes, a, a lot of good conversation. You know, is, is it going to be Adam Cole and Britt Baker against uh, Statlander and uh, Orange Cassidy? I think that's where the storyline's going to go. Yeah, that's probably the match coming up. There you go. All right, Jason, have buddy. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for calling, man. Have a good Thanks, one, man. Thanks, Jace. So, as I was saying, birthdays today. Happy was, birthday is being to brought you. to you by Bruce Brothers live from fabulous Las Vegas. And I'm doing this because I missed one during the ramp. I'm supposed to do it twice and I missed one. The you Brew, had one. The Brew Brothers. Brothers live from fabulous Las Vegas ah. wrestling memorabilia and collectibles every Sunday at 2 p.m. exclusively on the Top Rope Collectibles Facebook group page. Search for them on Top Rope Collectibles. Today's birthday song is being brought to you by Pocket Aces. If you don't know who they are, look them up on Facebook. All right, if you're celebrating a birthday today through next Friday, the 21st, first of all, we want to wish you a happy birthday. And you're celebrating with these people. January 15th. One year older. What? what? And you're one year older. You're one year older. January 15th, Kelly Kelly, Shane McMahon, Bull Buchanan, Nicole Matthews, and Tucker. January 18th, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Batista and Mark Briscoe. I love I love Batista's commercials when he's at in the boat guy with the silver hair. He's I forgot what the commercial's even about, but he's pretty good in that role. Yep. Tells you how good I follow it. I don't even know the product that he's pitching. January 19th, the legendary Pat Patterson. Probably next, one of the funniest guys all in wrestling and the world title holder of the 24-7 belt. He's held it what, like 60,000 times? The I-15, 7-Eleven. <laughs> I-15, right, I-10. <laughs> R-Truth. And also Tyler Breeze, one half formerly of Fandango. January 20th, one half of the good fellas, Carl Anderson. And on the 21st, Maurice. And you can put this picture up now if you don't mind there, Mr. Producer. Hello, Mr. Producer. Mr. Ivan Putski, Polish power. Known for the Polish hammer. Now, the reason I wanted to picture up on this, we could not find it. But back in the day when he first wrestled WWE, this guy was so out of shape, he looked like a walking potato because he was so his lower body was so almost pear shaped, not potato, but his lower body, his legs were strong, but he was not in great shape. And I don't, I don't want to call it, but I'd say he he was up around three twenty, three thirty. Yeah, I don't know what his weight was, but he. But then you talk of, about a lot guy of who potatoes and locks <laughs> and that type of stuff, you know. Well, he's from Poland, isn't well, that? Yeah, where, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Po Potatoes are part of Polish uh, uh, finer I'm eating, right? I'm just trying to help you out. I know. I appreciate it. All that. I know is of all the birthdays, of all the pictures we could have put up, it's Maurice's birthday, and we put up a picture of Ivan Putz. I know, yeah. but, but Maurice is on television. Obviously, these pictures were not approved by Matt Mullen, <laughs> the big boss man of Thoughts <laughs> But, but Maurice is already on television. We don't see Ivan Putski anymore. Well, I see dead, by the way. You know, Maybe that's why we don't see you him. You know what, though? Hey, Principe, thanks for checking in, buddy. Hey. Maurice may not be on TV, man. She walked off on Miz again. Well, but she has the intergender match so you know. coming up, so who knows. Anyway, so Ivan Putski went away. We talked about wrestlers going away for a while. And all of a sudden, this guy comes back looking like you just saw in that picture. Yep. And, uh, man, oh, man, what a drastic change. But still, that Polish hammer, as he would always yell, Polish power, Polish as he power. would get into it, right? Yes, he a would. Mainstay at MS MSG oh, yeah. uh, for many, many years. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is he, is he still alive? Okay, there you go. January 21st, his birthday. He's 80 years old, originally from Krakow, Poland. Very good. All right, he's on Polish that one. Polish power. So do we have an old, do we have a veteran or not? We'll just no, use we'll Ivan use Putski. We'll All right, there you go. Today. Um, that was the one thing I forgot to do. <laughs> That's okay, no worries. We got you covered. We end up using Ivan Putski. All right, with that, we got a couple of minutes left. Shall we get into some quick pop culture before we sign you off? Know, you know, for some reason, before yes. we do, sure. we were talking about something earlier. Okay. And... We only have four minutes left. Something so. that didn't doesn't get its just due. Okay. And we just talked about the gentleman, Pat Patterson. Yes. The intercontinental title does not get just due. No. Nope. Hasn't and for I'll, a long and time. I'll just leave it at that. No, it hasn't for a very long time. You know? It used to be prestigious. It was you if you held that, you're pretty much in line for a heavyweight championship title reign at some point. Now it's just 
Shinsuke Nakamura, is he still the title holder for the Intercontinental belt? Yeah. Now, he came back last night after a couple of weeks off. He was injured or something. And but. He, he, did, he took Sami Zayn's head off last night, man. Go to and, th- and you know what? I wish they'd let Shinsuke... When's the last time you've seen Shinsuke wrestle on TV? Well, he, he's been hurt. He was hurt the last couple of months. He's been a champion for a couple of months, and I read somewhere he's defended the title once. Yeah. ThoughtsCountAnywhere.com is the website. Make sure you go on our website, check out past shows, news and notes, and all from the world of wrestling. More importantly, check out our merchandise shop there, all of our shirts. Everything that you could ever want, our stuff on. There's just a screenshot there of some of our shirts. We'll have to, I'll bring up the laptop next time, and we'll show some more. Okay, a couple of news and notes before as we get ready to wrap up. There's our poster. We're going to get one. Once we start getting guests in there, so we got to order that soon. So when we have guests next month, we can get them to sign it. Real quick, versus Pro Wrestling tomorrow at the Studio 230. Power Play Sports and Collectibles. Card Today and Comic tomorrow. Comic Show. Out at Sunset Station on today and tomorrow from 10 to 6. It's Go see the, Scott Hosey and uh, Steve Johnson. And Steve Johnson. Yeah, it's on the street. Stop by and tell them you saw this here on our show, and uh, maybe they'll give you an extra stick of bubblegum or something. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> real quickly, a couple of news and notes. Um, first one, pa- another pass. Listen, 15 days into the year, and we've lost entertainers already. I mean, uh, quite a handful. Uh, Bob Saget. Um, from this, Full House this past week. Um, this 60, 65 was his age, right? He was in, found in a hotel room on the road. Yeah. That one hit me hard. Okay. I, 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 lo- I love that show. Yeah, lo- It hit a lot of people hard. Uh, America's uh, 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 Videos, he hosted that when that show originally started after yeah. Full House. I don't know if it was on at the same time as Full House. but uh, I think America's quick- Dad. Yeah, that's right. That was his nickname. Uh, of course, with the Olsen twins got their start, and uh, John Stamos and, and whatnot. I think I read a report that supposedly he had a heart attack or something in the room, not official. Yeah. But that was something I had read. He was doing shows, uh, stand-up comedy, um, and he had just sent a message out to Betty White. Yep. And now, yep. th- you know, after he put that message out uh, honoring her, the next day he passed. That was crazy. I saw he was, like, going on tour, and I was like, please come to Vegas. Please come to yeah. Vegas. It would have been, been funny. He been was great down in Florida. Yes. Just getting ready to he was do found a, at a hotel. I saw the yeah. meanest meme about that. Somebody posted, like, a picture of, like, the Full House house, and there was, like, a picture in the corner that says, room for rent. Oh, my God. And I'm like, bro, chill. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. That's too soon. <laughs> Thomas confirmed that both of those shows for Sackett ran at the same time. All right. This weekend, NFL playoffs. Go uh, Niners, place today, down with the Cowboys. Today and tomorrow. Um, okay, I, uh, Thomas, you can put in about your Buffalo Yeah, now Bills you can put now. in the Bills. Bills take on the Patriots tonight. It's going to be forecasted zero degrees at kickoff, minus six with a, with a relatively small, about 10 miles per hour winds, but no snow projected like the last time they played Jeez. when the Patriots only threw three times and, and – Beat them, uh, beat them with the well, running game. going to be like a pure running game. I think they said Cincinnati was going to be, what, 31 today when kickoff uh, would the That's still Bengals warmer than zero. When the Bengals oh, it's going to be tom- uh, Is that tomorrow? Today. Oh, so both AFC games are today and I NFC be- tomorrow? Yes, sir, I okay. believe so. I thought it was split, but that makes sense to me. Um, so NFL playoffs, which means we're getting close to the Super Bowl. And last but not least, yeah, I saw you put that picture up, the scam picture. You're welcome to put that up. I saw that in the preview window. Uh, $3.5 million. <laughs> Logan Could Paul. happen to a better person. Pokemon, $3.5 million. If you want to catch the reasoning and how all that transpired, please go to the Penalty Box Facebook page, tab under videos. Watch this morning's episode. Steve Johnston, the toy expert, really shed a lot of insight into how that happened Who and what to do with it. That was, that was Logan Paul. That was the guy who spent the money. Apparently he got his money back. Not yet. He, well, I don't know if he has. According to Steve, it's they're still investigating, but maybe uh, he has. Um, but he, anyway, watch Penalty Box. But YouTube sensation, then he became a fighter. He oh, okay. appeared on WWE a few is that, times. Is that that clown that uh, was in the ring with, uh, what's his name on WWE? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what clown he was referring to, but he was in the WWE ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One hour from now, Aaron's Hour with Aaron Phillips will be live right here with Mona. Mystic Mona will be joining us. Cynic and the Psychic Part 2. Give us a call. Maybe she'll read you. Maybe she'll give you, like Matt suggested, maybe who will win Royal Rumble. Who knows? She better know who's already going to call in. It's true. She, re- <laughs> she should already know what the hell's going to go on in that hour. Anyway, final thoughts. Everybody be safe. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your oversaturated wrestling <laughs> like everybody else. Thoughts? 
<laughs> chips and dips and football weekend. Let's have fun. There you go. I love, love you it. all. All right. Be safe, everybody. Be happy. Be healthy. CCSD here in, in uh, Las Vegas closed down for five days to try to give everybody a little bit of a reset. Not going to happen because a lot of people plan to go to California on this five-day weekend, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, join me in one hour. Be kind to everybody. Why is that? We're all we have. We'll see you next week on Thoughts Count Anywhere.